Salutations, respective viewers. This is George from Ireland. I'm continuing my series about uh, the Second World War and the Soviet Union. Um, I'm going to look at uh, Allied help towards the Soviet Union, particularly from the United Kingdom. Now, people from former Soviet states often like to emphasize that uh, Allied help w was insufficient. And they're right, I suppose. Certainly, weapons were provided, very few soldiers were provided. And as that was the main theater of operations in the Second World War, the Western Allies ought to have sent lots of troops, sent from their main units, even emptied the prisons, sent anybody, because the Second World War was going to be won or lost in the Soviet Union. Um, but what astonished London was some of the very strange requests from Moscow at this time of dire emergency, such as gold braid, so it could be in their officer's uniform. Well, they thought this would, would give their officers more Elan, I suppose, more kudos amongst their men. At such a critical stage in a life or death struggle, the Red Army surely had more pressing concerns. Why was Stalin thinking about such fripperies? Um, it was part of a general return to tradition at the time. Political commissars and units had their, had their status reduced. The career officers, the professional military men, their word was law because they, 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 you couldn't allow a political commissar to overrule a military commander in such a situation. The political commissars were sort of uniform spies on the men, but also there to be preaching the party line. Um, Stalin also asked um, Anthony Eden, the British Foreign Secretary, to confirm that when the war ended in victory for the USSR, the UK would recognise that Eastern Poland, Moldova, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia were all integral parts of the Soviet Union. Sir Anthony reported this back to the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, um, and... Uh, Eden observed that it would be dishonourable to recognise uh, these Soviet land seizures. Um, but the UK had her back to the wall and she was in no position to quibble. Uh, the British government delayed uh, coming to a decision on this. They were to revisit it in 1945. Um, surely the urgent matter was to just get on and win the war, or else there would be no squabbling over who owned Lithuania. Um, Anyway, the Soviet government harangued the British to take the pressure off them by um, invading German-held territory elsewhere. It was a reasonable position. Soviets were being killed in huge numbers, and the British were not dying in serious numbers. The fighting in the Western Desert, that's it. Fighting at the sea, a little bit. They weren't even bombing Germany at that stage. Um, in 1940, after the French surrender, Molotov had gone to Berlin. That was a, Soviet Foreign Secretary, and the uh, Germans assured him the British are finished. They're going to raise the white flag any day now. British intelligence had caught wind of this, and they sent the RAF on a bombing mission to drop um, a few bangs over Berlin, simply to prove they could do it, because they wanted to impress on Molotov that the British were still in the war. And so Molotov was having his uh, banquet at um, Hotel Adlon and Unter den Linden, and all of a sudden the air raid sirens start up and everybody scuttles down to the bomb shelter. And Molotov's turning to Ribbentrop, the German Foreign Secretary, saying, what, I thought you assured me that the British were finished. They were on the point of surrender. And the British had just emphasised that they um, still had some fight in them. Anyway, but by 1941, the Soviet Union was doing the great bulk of the fighting. And the UK was disappointing the Soviet Union time and again, saying that the British military was in no fit state to fight on the mainland. Uh, so the uh, Soviets said, with some justice, that the British are leaving us in the lurch. They're not suffering serious death toll, whereas the Soviets very much are. Not just the military, but civilians in huge numbers being slaughtered. There's no accident. It's not ca caught in the crossfire. It's deliberately taken out and killed. Um, so uh, His Majesty's government did not intend to invade the continent in 1942. Winston Churchill flew to Moscow in 1942 to meet Stalin face to face for the very first time. Um, there was an ideological chasm between them. Um, apropos of nothing, Churchill said to Stalin, what did you do with the kulaks, the rich peasants? Stalin replied pithily, well, we killed them. On this occasion, he cannot be faulted for candor. So um, Churchill was dealing somewhat with somebody who was uh, uh, disarmingly frank sometimes, but what a way for Churchill to make dinner time uh, conversation. Um, but uh, Stalin was a mirthful man at times and said that, of course, uh, uh, God is a good conservative and, and, and the devil is a communist. Um, uh, so he said he preferred 
an honest enemy like Churchill, who was an avowed anti-communist, to a false friend like Hitler, who pretended to make peace with the Soviet Union, but was treacherously preparing an invasion. Um, the German high command had seen uh, the Soviet Union's uh, underperformance in Finland in 1939, followed it with keenest interest, and they had uh, wrongly concluded that the Soviet war machine was not up to much. Well, it had improved. It was no pushover for um, Hitler's battle-hardened cohorts. Um, the Red Army learned some lessons from a winter war. Some incompetent officers were sacked, and abler ones were promoted. Um, the Soviet Union was no longer facing guerrillas. The Germans were, were, were given enough rope to hang themselves. The Soviet retreats were not for this purpose, but they did have the unintended consequences of overstretching the Soviet, sorry, the German supply lines. The Wehrmacht had hugely underestimated the difficulty of subjugating the Soviet Union. The Wehrmacht had enjoyed so many uh, walkover victories uh, that they became um, unduly cocky. They only issued their men these light summer uniforms. Um, they thought it would be completed in a season. Well, they were sorely mistaken. As autumn drew on, the heavy rains came and it caused uh, grave difficulties for the Wehrmacht. The Soviet ro roads mostly didn't have any tarmac, so vehicles became uh, stuck in glutinous mud. Um, and apart from that gloopy mud, sometimes bridges flooded. The, the very inefficiency of the Soviet transport system actually worked as a defense mechanism. Sometimes, as I say, no flood defenses in places, earthen embankments or old bridges which are sometimes submerged. Snow set in, and that rendered many roads impassable. So the Wehrmacht was all about speed. Suddenly they didn't have speed, and their lengthy supply lines were open to attacks by partisans. So the Soviet simply, sorry, the Germans simply didn't have enough troops to hold down the civilian population. They got auxiliaries, as I say, some uh, local citizens who joined them. So how on earth did anybody survive on the German occupation? If you... Um, didn't uh, didn't work for the Germans, you might well starve to death. And if you did, you thought, and if the Red Army wins at the end, we're for it. So the Wehrmacht headed for Leningrad, St. Petersburg, as it is called now, Moscow and Stalingrad, the three holy cities of Bolshevism, as Hitler dubbed them. He wanted to capture all, to capture all three. If he had picked just one at a time, then he might have won. Leningrad was under siege from the winter of 1941. Um, she was to endure bombardment for 900 days. Early in the siege, a large warehouse filled with comestibles was hit by a shell and burnt down. The only way to get over uh, to get supplies in was through Lake Ladoga. In the summer, these came by boat. In the winter, the uh, um, lake was frozen solid, and so lorries could drive over it. It was in between when it was highly problematic for the Soviets because there was ice, but too thin. Lorries would sink in. And because there were, was ice, it was impassable to boats. So people were on very short rations indeed, and many uh, Leningraders died of starvation. Sometimes it was a multifactorial death. Malnutrition was a contributory factor. This caused people to be in debilitated health. There was severe cold. There was insufficient fuel. And they were overworked, considering their very low calorific intake. Um, so uh, that was the start of Leningrad's time on the cross. Anyway, let's look to November 1941. Uh, the German military was drawing close to Moscow. Stalin decided that the October Revolution commemoration must go ahead. There seemed little to, to celebrate 24 years after the uh, great socialist October Revolution. Uh, many generals were aghast. Uh, thousands of soldiers would congregate on Red Square. The Luftwaffe might take a peek on the off chance that Stalin was crazy enough to hold a parade there. And if the Luftwaffe um, uh, dropped a few bombs on Red Square, they could be sure to kill thousands. But Stalin um, railroaded it through. The celebrations would go ahead at the usual time, um, but this wouldn't be announced in advance. So men sometimes marched from Red Square straight to the front, and I suppose it would steal in their soul. Um, by modern reckoning, the October Revolution took place on 5th of November, which is when it's celebrated. No, it's not Guy Fawkes Day. Um, so there was a fierce fighting to the west of Moscow in November and into early December. Uh, the weather became so gelid that many German vehicles would not start, and the, Soviets, so, uh, the Soviet soldiers were ill-prepared for such severe weather. I know it can get minus 20 in Germany, which they could just about cope with, but not minus 40, as it's sometimes in the Soviet Union. 
um, is redolent of what um, Tsar Nicholas I had said, that his best commanders were General January and General February, as in the severity of the winter would put paid to foreign invaders. So appeals went out to the German civilian populace at this time for um, any spare winter clothing to be dispatched to the Wehrmacht, which would be then sent on to soldiers on the Eastern Front. It's at this time that German civilians got the inkling that all was not well uh, with their invasion of the Soviet Union. The Soviet, uh, sorry, the German Minister for Propaganda and Popular Enlightenment, that's Dr. Goebbels, um, had been feeding them a line. Newspaper headlines had been printed such as Europe is saved by the Führer's military genius. Now, the German advances had indeed been spectacular, but that wasn't good enough for the Nazis. They'd claimed that their gains were even more extraordinary than they had been in reality. Um, so this cold weather was more than the German military could cope with, and uh, their tanks were poorly designed because they worked very well in laboratory conditions, but they couldn't cope with these very cold temperatures with deep mud, with a lot of water, with too much dust, with excessive heat. They broke down too frequently. The Soviet tanks, in a sense, were nothing special, but they were hard wearing, they were durable. They could cope, cope with very cold and very hot weather, plenty of mud, they could go through a lot of water, they could go up very steep angles. They uh, were tough, they didn't break down very easily. Even though they weren't that fast, even though the gun didn't have a huge range, or a very high rate of fire, or pack that much of a punch, they worked. Was the German tanks broke down too often. We'll come on to more about that later. Anyway, the Soviets were taking no chances about Moscow. The government was um, evacuated, um, uh, and Lenin's body was sent to Tumen in Siberia, and indeed foreign diplomats went there, or foreign embassies were set up there. Millions of uh, Soviets were dying, but preserving Lenin's dead body was a priority. Stalin's family was sent east. He had his personal train prepared to whisk him to safety on the far side of the Urals. Uh, it was covered in branches so he could hide in a forest on the railway track. At the last moment, he decided that he would not uh, steal away. So um, workers from factories and so on were armed to resist the enemy onslaught. The Soviet uh, assault on Moscow went off half-cocked. The German soldiers entered the very eastern suburbs of Moscow and could even see the Kremlin on the horizon. Police had been withdrawn or pressed into military service. Law and order broke down and there was a Saturnalia of looting of shops. Uh, the German attack was fairly easily repelled. They got uh, close to the, to the furthest easternmost metro station, but that was it. Then the Soviets, having mass troops, prepared a powerful counteroffensive, and they drove the Third Reich's forces back 50 miles.